uh, Takeshita comes out, and he's coming out for his match with uh, Brian Danielson. And so MJF comes out with a mic. Now, here's disconnect number one for me. Brian Danielson wants to kick this guy's ass so badly, he comes out right before he's supposed to come out, and he just lets this guy talk for 20 minutes. That's my ish. That's my only issue with this first second. I, with this first part of it. What was your second? Well, it's it's mostly the content uh, uh, of the information. Uh, so he's trying to. So, so th- there's a little bit of like a psychology here because for MJF, he wants to cash it to win the match because then the match with Daniel with Brian Danielson is off. Yeah. And so he's like trying to fire him up, but he's doing it in such a condescending way. He calls him, uh, what is your name? Take a shit. Yeah. And then yeah. he, he, uh, Takeshita cuts a promo on him in, in Japanese and MJF does the whole, Oh, we speak American in, you know, in the U S <laughs> and then Takeshita speaks English and tells him to kiss his ass. And that was like the punchline, right? That was the yeah. pop. And yeah. so before, even before that, I think, I think MJF said like Kanichiwa or something like that, like in like a really sort of derogatory way. Mm-hmm. And so I understand the pro wrestling psychology of the heel doing something to offend the baby face who is a, a different, you know, he's from a different country or whatever. It's like, it's, it's a historical trope in the history of pro wrestling. Yeah. The problem that I have with it. And we talked about this going all the way back to when MJF was making fun of uh, flying Brian Pillman, right? Remember when they were doing that match with Brian Jr. and he's going about your dead father and this and that. My problem, so so there's a, a I, I didn't find it racist, but there is a, a racial teasing. Uh, and, and, you know, historically, Asians, um, they, they, get teased because they don't fight back right like that's mm-hmm. traditionally like the the reason um you know i have stories from you know my mom growing up in this country being japanese american and, and just this is really bad stuff so that's the history it's cheap and my problem is if mjf is one of the best promos in the business he doesn't need it he doesn't need to be so low-hanging fruit so under the table, so cheap heat, uh, because he, he's great. Now, some of this is he's a star, and in being a star, the fans really kind of do like him. They don't really hate him, hate him, so he tries to make them hate him, hate him. Yeah. But going to that level is, is it should be beneath him, at least by now, because, um, you know, the, 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 we're, we're in a little bit of a different era the the world is different society is different and i saw a lot of fans just really offended and now i wasn't as offended even though i am you know half japanese uh and and i've said on this show part of the reason i don't watch nxt is because i thought that they treated the the stereotypes it was just way mm-hmm. too much for me um you know it's like uh you know my favorite rap artists uh i you know i this is sort of a thing in, in hip-hop it's like the guys who constantly lean on the curse, the curse word, hmm. it's like, oh, so you're not, you don't have good enough language, yes. you don't, you don't have good enough grammar, you don't have good enough vocabulary to. Instead, you always have this, you know, you use the curse in a hmm. crutch, and that's yep. kind of what I feel about MJF. Is he's too good, he doesn't need to to go there, he doesn't need to lean into the cornet stuff because he knows that cornet is cheap heat for AEW fans. Uh, and I think he's, I think it could be better. And so that's kind of my, my thought on when he goes places like this. Yeah. I mean, I didn't mind it. I mean, you know, I'm sure more people were far offended by it. I mean, it's to me, it's just kind of classic heel wrestling, you know, I mean, he's very heavily influenced by Roddy Piper. I mean, shoot, you know, Roddy Piper and Chava Grey in LA. I mean, those promos were, you know, oof. okay. But, okay. You know. but, but. Now, this kind of explains what you're saying and, and kind of what I'm saying, too. I remember being with Dave, mm-hmm. and this is before Dave and I really got close, close. You know, this is before you and I started going over to his house and watching, you know, pay-per-views and stuff. But mm-hmm. so this was around the Anderson Silva and Chael Sonnen fight. 
I think it was yeah. the I think it was the second fight because it was in Oakland. Oakland, yep. And Chael Sonnen had gone to Roddy Piper Mm-mm. and was like, "What? Like how? Like how can I really get that heat that that I need for this fight?" And Roddy said, "I don't think this was Roddy's advice, mm-hmm. but I think Roddy was like, well, you could go over the top and." use the n-word like that's the cheapest of all heats and chael was like no no no, i can't do that right Mm -hmm. but i sort of feel like if we have to get to that level it is it's just become too much now maybe you can't shock people anymore with language maybe you can't Mm -hmm. do dastardly stuff because wrestling fans are in on the joke but i sort i feel like wrestling fans have always been in on the joke so maybe we don't have to try and you know, get these visceral boos and these guttural boos. And it's just like, just run your stuff. Like, yeah. let's just, let's go. I was thinking that, I was thinking that recently. Now I've been doing a lot of catching up on my books, you know, finished the Roy Shire book by the great, you know, great author, Rock Rims. Who oh, just there you puts go. Out great stuff. I'm now moving on to Brian Solomon's book, The Sheik, mm-hmm. about the original Sheik. It's been just fan. I'm breezing through that thing. It's been so fantastic. But when I was reading the Shire book, you know, because it's just, I was thinking about finishes and they're, they talk about a lot of the results, a lot of the finishes and like, what can you do to make people believe anymore? Right? Like today, like it takes guys go through like four or five tables for like, you know what I mean? And they're, they're just, they continue the match, you know, over there, a guy would just get ran to a post, come up bloody and can't get back in the ring. And people accept that as a finish and they can't wait to see the guy come back and, Try to get revenge, and now it's a you know no stopping for a blood match. You know that, that was the transition spot to go to picture in picture. Yeah, that was a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so as I'm reading this, you know, I'm reading this, you know, the Roy Shire book, and also when it was big time about the whole Northern California uh, history of professional wrestling and the territory and stuff. That's also a great book at Rock Rooms wrote as well. I'm reading, you know, I'm just reading. I'm like, God, yeah, like what? And I'm thinking, like, I'm reading these great finishes and these rebuilds to the rematches, and I'm thinking, like what could these guys do and gals do like now it's like we see table spots every, every, every show, yeah. you know, it, it was just, and I was thinking about like with heat too, like on promos, like what could they say? Is there anything they can say anymore to get any kind of heat? You know, it's just, I didn't think it was too bad that MGF said, I, I don't think it was Roddy Piper, Chavo Guerrero bad, yeah, but yeah, yeah, it was, um, you know, I was just, I was, I just thought, man, he was on fire. I called the wife in because her crush growing up was Freddie Prince Jr. Oh yeah. The first she saw the Ken, the Ken Jong part. And she was kind of like, this is all you want to show me. Like, yeah, you know, she likes Ken Jong, and she was a big fan of the hangover. But we saw it like six times in the theater when it came out. <laughs> but, uh, but um, I was like, just wait before you walk off. And here comes her, her uh, love Freddie Prince Jr. And she, she's like, when he said he was bo- wasn't even born yet when the movie came out because he was yeah. born in 1996, she's like, "Oh my god, this guy is 10 years younger than I am," you know. <laughs> and I'm just like, "Yep, we're getting old." <laughs> <laughs> she's younger than me though, so it's funny. Um, yeah. So, uh, so then MJF goes into his Ric Flair mode and he's talking about being the 60 minute man and the Iron Man. And he's talking about the ladies and the ring rats. Mm-hmm. And then he calls out Dr. Ken in the crowd and was doing the thing that we talked about earlier. And, and like in my said, mind, I'm like, dude, I would totally make fun of this guy's show that only lasted one season before it got canceled. Yeah. And then he, and he, and he, sh- but he said it got canceled, but we don't know if it was lasted for one season or seven seasons. You know, like, you have to bring up it only lasted one season. Was so, like, he could have really dived in deep of how bad that show was and why it didn't last, you know. But yeah, he, I think he ran long with this promo. Yeah. And that's why, long. uh, the match at the end was coming up to the end there. Uh, it went over a minute over, I think. Um, oh, the main event, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think his uh, promo went a little long, yeah. So then he calls, like you said, calls out Freddie Prinz, mentions she's all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it reminded me of when uh, we, we talked about Freddie Prinz wanting to start his own wrestling federation. And I said yeah. that it's got to be the she's all that wrestling federation. Uh, and then he called him a Scooby Dooby douchebag, which I thought was a pretty good line. It's unfortunate that Freddie Prince, they knew this was gonna ha- coming up, he's gonna be in attendance, and they were gonna he was gonna be there to for MGF to give him some lip. 
why did Freddie Prince on this podcast talk about how he's one of his best friends is MGF? So I was like, oh man, you know, like, 